Hello and welcome into the kitchen. Uh, kitchen rather than a workshop this time because we seem to have a problem with this induction hob. Last week when I was using it, I was boiling the kettle on the big ring as normal. When it came to the boil, I whipped the kettle off and unfortunately there was a rather nasty bang. Um, tripped the brake, got all the power went off for, for, for the stove top. After putting the power back on again though, I noticed that um, the right hand side rings, the two on the right hand side here, work perfectly fine. The ones on the left here don't work at all. And indeed when the unit's still switched off, you can see this E6 coming up. Now, I have to admit I've been inside the unit already to have a look. I think I've identified what the problems are. And uh, so I think it's time we go into the workshop and see if we can fix it. Okay, we're in the workshop now and I've got the unit out from the countertop. I've got it laid down on a carpet towel face down. I need to separate the, the glass top now from the electronics. Okay, a little bit further in now. Um, that's a large ring there. I'm not too worried about that blackening there. I, I did overcook something a number of years ago and, um, and that got overheated, so I don't think that's a problem. Um, so yeah, I need to get a little bit further in now, so I need to remove these induction coils. Okay, now we're in. Um, we can have a look a little bit closer at the printed circuit boards. As I said uh, in the beginning of the video, I have already been inside here. I think I've identified what the problems are, but I'd like to just show you what they are before I try and fix it. Anyway, just pause the video and get the camera off the tripod to take a closer look. So I've just turned the unit round to 90 degrees, and um, so we've got the main power incoming section here. And then we've got the two identical boards um, connected uh, in the centre by just there's, there's two heat sinks here and they're just connected by two little clips. So that would explain why one side of the induction hub is working still fine, the other side is not. Obviously there's something wrong on one of those boards. But in terms of uh, a visual problem, the first thing that uh, my eye was drawn to is actually at, on the power board. And so you can see these two orange uh, capacitors here, but if I go in a bit closer, the lighting is not too great. But you can also see two fuse carriers here without fuses in. And the manufacturer has designed this um, in a way that um, the power sections are obviously split into two, uh, as are the control boards. And they have utilized the printed circuit board actually as a fuse and you may be able to see just on this right hand side here that the track has actually blown off the PCB. So my surmise is that something's gone horribly wrong over on, on this um, control board uh, and that's actually caused that fuse to, to blow. So the investigation that I did, and again if I can probably just switch this around, was basically just to get a, a, a meter on the most likely points of failure and, and we've got uh, some rather large MOSFETs here or I, they're actually IGBTs and yes indeed I found that the two that were mounted here were all short circuited um, so clearly something's gone wrong on that and that actually corresponds to the rear plate where the kettle was um, a couple of weeks ago when it, when it actually failed. What I also discovered in removing the parts, and this is, is not going to be able to see on the camera, but there are a couple of Zener diodes down there on the PCB, and I assume, not that my electronics experience is that good, but I assume those Zener diodes, diodes are there to clamp the voltages on the gate leg particularly, uh, making sure that that's limited only to uh, something that's safe for the gate. But indeed, one of the Zener diodes was not attached at both ends. It was actually only attached at one end and the other end was waving in the breeze. So 
clearly it looks like a, a problem that's been waiting to happen so I soldered down the other side of the zener diode and I'm going to replace the IGBTs so I'll put the camera back on the stand and pause the video and we'll uh, go to take the uh, printer circuit board out and take it across and get those parts soldered in Okay, here we are on the bench. I've got the uh, PCB just uh, zoomed in a little bit. So let's just take a little bit closer look at this uh, area here. And so, yeah, this this was the uh, Zener diode that was actually not connected at both ends. This left-hand end here was actually uh, waving in the breeze, um, but it was attached on this uh, right-hand end. So hopefully this. Uh, hasn't blown any other uh, devices and it's just the uh, IGBTs that have blown. Um, now in terms of replacements let's zoom out a little bit. So the replacements I've got are uh, from RS Components and I think I mentioned earlier that they uh, are equivalent, they're not exactly the same and one of the differences is that the uh, the old devices actually the back of the IGBT is isolated from any of the legs which is not, not unusual but it's not, not, not particularly common so I'm going to have to use a little bit of insulating uh, heat transfer pad material between the back of the device and the actual um, heatsink here. Okay, another thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to pop on uh, a wrist strap. Uh, these devices are quite static sensitive, ESD sensitive. Uh, they're in a nice uh, sort of protective uh, bag at the moment, but I'm going to need to take those out obviously, bend the legs up and get the devices soldered in. I want to make sure that I don't zap them accidentally. It's very easy um, to kill these components with ESD. You know, if you're wearing some nylon shirt or something like that, then you can quite easily get 10, 20,000 volts built up on your body. That transfers to, to one of the legs. And you might not actually kill the device, but you'll probably shorten its life. Um, and so that's one of the hidden dangers of, of sort of putting these sort of devices in. Uh, some of them are obviously more sensitive than others, and these devices are actually quite sensitive to ESD and ESD damage. Anyway, so got the wrist on, I'm connected up to the earth. Uh, I'm actually also working on a, a, an ESD mat here too as well. So, let's pop these out of the bag. I'm going to avoid touching them as, as much as I can, even though I am wearing a wrist strap and yeah, I'm not wearing any nylon clothes, I'm just wearing cotton t-shirt and shorts. Nice and warm in Sydney here today. I guess we can just do a quick check. I've got the meter set on um, continuity here. So I'm just pushing it a little bit more into the shot. So yeah, you can see that the, the centre leg is actually connected, whereas the... Uh, the old devices, yeah, none, none of the legs are actually uh, connected through to, to the back. Just looking at the way that I actually tested these, uh, you'll notice there's a dead short between the, the centre leg and the uh, outer leg. If I go up to um, one of the other devices here, which uh, I'm, I'm assuming is, is still working well. Do the same test, just with a continuity beeper. You'll notice that uh, it's a nice open circuit. So I'm assuming those two are fine, and indeed these were the two that were faulty. Okay, I'm gonna get these bent up. Just try and get them bent up roughly the same profile 
sort of bend just about. Not too worried about this. Just gets uh, the first little bend like that. Do the same with the second one. Those popped in. about right. Well, that was much harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, it took me around about half an hour to get that clip back on again. Uh, you can see I've uh, <clears throat> scraped the aluminium up a little bit here. I ended up actually having to slide it in from the end because there is a bit of a, a profile there that the clip actually wants to hook onto. Um, yeah, tried quite a few different techniques, so um, hopefully everything's okay. Uh, I've cleaned everything up again, and uh, so now try and uh, plug it back in, see if it works. Okay. Okay, I've um, temperately connected it up, uh, just a simple socket, obviously not going to test it at full power or anything like that, just want to see whether it made a difference or whether it's all been to naught. Here we go, one, two, three, bang. Okay, first thing I notice is that there's no arrows coming up on the left hand too, which is good. Second thing, does it work? No. And that's because it's not plugged in. One, two, three. Ooh, saw a bit of a flash then. No error lights. 
Looks good. Okay, back into the kitchen because I'm absolutely parched for a cup of tea. Okay, let's see if it works. Sounds good. Cheers.